Are you looking for a decent entry-level laser that's not going to break the bank but also can do things like cut acrylic, engrave glass, and just have more power than a standard diode laser? Well, that's where CO2 comes in. Most of the time when you think of a CO2 laser, you might think of something more expensive that costs two or three thousand dollars, takes up a ton of room, is complicated to learn. Well, this right here is Monfort's K40 with light burn built in. That's right, this K40 comes with light burn out of the box. You don't have to modify it. You don't have to add another control board. You don't have to do any surgery to it. Just plug it in and it works. It really is that simple with this one. And that is why I've chosen to partner with Monfort to bring you guys this laser. Over the next few months and over the next several videos, we're gonna take a deep dive into the differences between a diode laser and a CO2 laser. The benefits of diode, because diode still does have some benefits that this specific CO2 doesn't, but also this CO2 has a whole lot of benefits that diode just can't match, specifically when it comes to cutting acrylic or cutting thicker material in a much, much faster time. So if you're interested in picking up a diode laser or a CO2 laser, whether it's the Monport or something else, then be sure to keep watching this video. We're about to go ahead and unbox the Monport laser. We'll do a first firing test and I'll give you guys my initial thoughts on what I think about using a CO2 laser versus the two diode lasers that I already have in my shop. So thanks for watching. My name is Patrick. This is Created Workshop and let's get into the video. Unboxing the Monport K40 with light burn is pretty simple. It comes fully assembled and on top you'll find a small bag that has some accessories as well as the laser safety glasses. Once the laser is out of the box, you'll open up the lid and take out other accessories like the vent hose and the water cooling tubes that are inside. Also, at some point, be sure to unscrew the acrylic window and peel off the masking so you can see inside of the laser housing when you're using it. There's a blue protective coating on the bed and that's something that you'll want to peel off because you don't want to be cutting into that with the laser when you're using it. Also, be sure to remove the screws that are keeping the laser cover and the power supply cover held down so you can gain access to those areas before setting the laser up. Once all of that's done, you're ready to plug everything in and get the laser up and running. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over how I have the laser set up since it's in place. Now, this is a little while after the initial unboxing, so I have done some modifications already. Those modifications we will go over further in a future video. But for starters, here is the laser. It is connected to my desktop that is out here next to my CNC. Uh, on my laser, I actually only really use one of my uh, temperature gauges, which is the um, temperature of the water in the laser tube. Right now, that's 14.3 C. And uh, I am actually running um, antifreeze in it because it gets cold here in the winter. So I'm running antifreeze in the summer. I'll swap over to water. Um, you do have to watch out. Antifreeze does not cool quite as well as regular water. So that's something to keep in mind. Here's your emergency stop. It will come pressed in. The laser will not work. So you will need to turn it to bring it back on. This right here is the included focus gauge. Now, something that I am going to be doing uh, later down the road is printing a proper focus gauge that has the different millimeter steps. So that way you can really dial it in but this does work once you learn where to put it for the laser. Uh, and mine is gonna be a little bit different than yours, again, because I've done some modifications already. You have your ammeter here. This is digital and uh, something to keep in mind with this ammeter is this dial still does control how the laser functions. Yes, this laser works with light burn, but this ammeter up here controls the maximum power output. So if you set this to 50% here, like that, and then you turn light burn to 100%, it's really only going to operate 50%. So what I do is I leave it turned all the way up at all times, and then I use light burn to control what my percentage is. That gives me the most granular control, and it works the best. Now over here in the laser, you can see there's been some changes done. This is the uh, adjustable Z-bed. Um, I've removed the back shroud for the fan and also I have an air assist nozzle on my laser. So that is a cloud ray nozzle um, and lens holder and all of that. And it works great, it does. And uh, then I am missing a little bit of the hot glue because I have had to redo a little bit of my 
adjustments of my mirrors, which we will go over that in the next video. Over here, we have the CW3000 chiller, and this chiller um, is actually really not a chiller. It is more of a uh, industrial water pump. So there is no active chilling or cooling going on here. Instead, the CW3000 uses fans on the inside um, and a little bit of a radiator setup in order to blow air across to try to bring the temperature down. So uh, you are still going to have to monitor your temperatures a little bit more with something like this than say the 5000 or the 5200, but it does work great. And one of my favorite things is the alarm. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn on this. If you could hear it beep there just now, right now my uh, water temperature is 13 degrees, but then if we close the lid, and we kind of go around back here. You see these are my water lines um, and they are pink because of the liquid in them with the antifreeze. But as soon as we pinch it, we have that beep that goes off. So that really is helpful and useful as that will tell you whether or not you are having a problem with the water flowing. Um, and then you also can see my air duct set up so up in the ceiling um, I actually actually exhaust out the side of my house I have a uh, six inch fan up there that is about 600 CFM maybe 400 I forget exactly um, I'll have it linked down below that is up in my attic and that runs with this six inch tubing down until right here and then this adapts down from six inch to the four inch and then this is the hose that Monport includes with the laser um, for the exhaust. I, now I still do have the inline fan that Monport included pre-installed in my system and it does work great. So I'm using both of them. Uh, it does not hurt to use both of them at all. And we will go ahead and shut off the chiller since we are not using the laser right now. And uh, at that point, this is the setup and it works fantastically. Um, I love using the Monport laser for a lot of different things, especially when it comes to cutting acrylic. Uh, it just is so much faster than either of my diodes that I use here in the shop. And just so you can kind of see what it's like to get this turned on and do at least the test fire, we're going to go ahead and turn the chiller back on. Everything's running there. We will open up the lid of the laser. We will turn the laser on, the lights come on, the fan kicks on, and then we will come over to light burn, have it home, and just so that way you can see that move, there is the laser, we're going to go ahead and move it to out here, and we will use the test button on the laser, now I'm not looking directly at it, and there we go. I don't have the Z-bed actually all the way up, so it's not gonna be perfectly uh, in alignment with the laser pointer, but that laser pointer does come stock on the, on the uh, Monport K40. That way you can know where it's going to hit. Uh, sometimes it does get jostled loose, so you might have to go through and realign that every now and then, but it's not too difficult to do that. And uh, back there, you can see the hoses leaving the system out those holes and this is where the exhaust is so as you burn it'll pull it out through there now that the laser is in position it's hooked up to the chiller we've got it hooked up to the exhaust it's going out of the house and we've done our first firing we're really on our way to having a solid laser now my specific unit i've already gone through and done a lot of tuning up but in the next video we're going to take a look at how to align your mirrors. That is gonna be one of the biggest things that you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do to your CO2 laser as soon as it arrives. You can lose power for not having your mirrors aligned. You can also have your laser completely not fire. You can be defocused. There's a lot of problems that can come if it's not aligned. Even though Monport does do a great job at aligning before it arrives to you, and they even glue all the mirrors in place, that still doesn't you know, really negate the effects of shipping. This laser is going to get jostled around. It is going to probably get dropped and a whole bunch of other things while it's with the shipping carriers. So when it gets to you, you want to make sure that those mirrors are aligned. We're going to take a look at that in the next video. 
And then after that, get our initial connection to light burn done, start running some tests and really getting this laser tuned up and going. I am in love with this Monport K40. It has been an amazing addition to the shop, especially with some of the add-ons that we've already put on. And just so that way you can know what to look forward to and content coming, we're gonna soon have a video up on adding a motorized Z-bed to your Monport K40. Yes, that's right. You can add a motorized Z-bed to the K40. It does cost right around $200, requires a little bit of soldering work, but you don't need to add any extra drivers. You don't need to add any extra controllers or any of that. The motherboard that this K40 has, that Monport has chosen to include with it, has all the stepper drivers, it has the connection, it has everything that you need from the factory. It is ready to go as soon as it arrives for this Z-Bed, and we'll be taking you through the steps on how to do that in a future video. So be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. That has been one of the best upgrades that we've made to this K40 so far. Another upgrade that we've made, we'll take a look at this one in the next video when we're talking about aligning your mirrors is adding an air assist nozzle. Now we've got an air assist nozzle hooked up to a little aquarium pump, although we're going to be hooking that into our air system with the compressor at a later date. Um, so that is something that will bring even more value than just the aquarium pump, but even the aquarium pump in a little $25 air assist nozzle will really take your Monport K40 to the next level. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, this is Patrick with Created Workshop. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. If you didn't, then go ahead and you know what button to hit. If you have any questions on the K40, please let me know. I would love to answer them for you. Also, if you're interested in picking up your own, use the code created workshop. It'll be down in the description. That way you can get 6% off of any purchase that you make at Monport, whether that's a machine, accessory, or whatever. If you make a purchase there, use that code. It'll save you 6%. And whether you're buying a smaller machine or a larger machine, that can really add up to a lot of savings, especially if you use it on the bundled version. That's the K40 with the Lightburn license. You're really getting a good discount on Lightburn with that and it's really, really worth it. Thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll catch you in the next one.